Now that consumer 360 cameras are becoming readily available, we're starting to see them placed in very um, mobile platforms, for example, on the helmet of a bicycle here. Now, this is a very compelling shot, but the problem is that uh, if you were to try to watch this in a headset, it, uh, it might cause some VR sickness. So I'm going to show you a little trick to actually stabilize this using our Reorient Sphere plugin and uh, whatever tracker you, you like to use. Now you could use the After Effects tracker and it tracks basically pixels and um, does not work so great on this type of footage. If you were to try to use just the stabilize function, it wouldn't work at all on, on this type of footage because it's an equirectangular projection. And what we're trying to do is stabilize based on three axes, um, but these trackers and stabilizers aren't really designed for that. But what is really interesting is that the equirectangular projection, it's a uh, two by one, it actually tells us a lot of information about the world and the orientation of the camera itself. Because we know that we have 360 degrees here horizontally and 180 degrees vertically, we know that if an object moves a certain distance, it must uh, be going uh, on a certain axis at however many degrees. Now normally we would use a tracker and we would do some algebra as an expression, but we've now put these algebraic uh, equations into our plugins, so that's no longer necessary and it's really easy. So let me show you how this works. Now I like to use the Mocha Pro tracker, but you don't have to use it for this application because the built-in Mocha AE is uh, perfectly capable of doing exactly the type of tracking that we need to do. In this particular case, what's happening is we have these buildings on the horizon and I want to track them as if they're just a flat plane. And that's going to give me all the information I need for uh, how much tilt, roll, and pan the uh, actual helmet head was doing. And uh, I'm going to basically counteract that with our plugin. So first things first, let's send this clip over to Mocha AE. And you just simply do that by clicking on the clip in your composition and then selecting track in Mocha AE. And Mocha AE will be launched. Now on my particular system, I have Mocha Pro installed, uh, but it will basically look the same way. This, um, op this option will come up to give it a new name and it'll ask you how many frames. Just leave everything as it is. It should all default to the exact settings that you require. You just click OK and you'll see that your shot comes in and uh, it's the exact same shot. Now I'm just going to maximize my window size here. And now I'm just going to zoom in on the actual uh, piece that I want to track, which are these buildings up here. And now I'll create an X-spline. And you just do that by clicking this little symbol here with the little X. And now you just start left-clicking on your shape. And I'm just going to make a very basic shape on these buildings over here. When you're done, just right click or control click. Okay, so now we have a shape created and you'll see it says layer one. And by default, the track module comes up. And uh, I have my settings defaulting to uh, 90%. Um, I think the basic default is 20. Uh, if you are not getting very good results with that, then try increasing this. Um, and the other thing is we don't have to track the shear, but we need translation and rotation. And uh, to get rotation, we also need to have scale turned on. And then I'm just leaving this on large motion. To start tracking forward, I'm just going to click the track forward button, which is right here. And now Mocha will start tracking the shot. And you'll see that it's, uh, it's doing a pretty good job of hanging on to where the building is there. So I'm just going to fast forward this process and uh, we'll see how the track is in, in just a minute. Okay, so I didn't bother tracking the whole clip. Um, but just to, you know, for the purposes of demonstration, I think this will be fine. Um, so I have tracked uh, the first few seconds of it, and uh, you can see that our track is, uh, is holding pretty well. I could probably tweak this and make it even better, um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I think this is, this is good enough. The important part here is we need to export this tracking data back into After Effects. 
So um, you just simply go over here and click Export Tracking Data. Now if you're using the Mocha Pro plugin, uh, you may not even have to do this because the plugin has its own features to be able to, uh, to bring this data back in. Um, but generally this is how I work. I just click Export Tracking Data. And then I have to make sure that we have the After Effects Transform Data selected. So we need Position and Rotation. So uh, that's the one I'm selecting. And I'm just going to copy to Clipboard. And then I'm just going to hop back over into After Effects. So in After Effects, now I need to put this data somewhere. So I'm going to create a new null object. And on the null object, I'm just going to paste the data. So there we go. Now we have this tracking data up on the null object. And we can just turn off the visibility of that null object. We don't need to see it. But on our base layer, and let's just uh, look at the whole view here, this is where we have to apply uh, the new version of the Reorient Sphere plugin. And uh, this will work with either version, either the 360VR Express or 360VR Toolbox. Um, Toolbox allows you to work in stereoscopic, whereas the Express version only has the, uh, the features for monoscopic. So you'll notice that we now have some new features in this plugin, and uh, that is AE tracking. So these are inputs from the tracking data. So now we have to link them up to the tracking data that we pasted onto the null object. So we just go down here and look at the reorient sphere, and then open up AE tracking. We better open up our null object as well and look at this data. It's pasted in here. All we have to do is option click on each of these, uh, position X, position Y, and rotation, and that brings up the expressions. So I option click, I get the expressions, but now all I have to do is pick whip. So this is position X, so now I will pick whip up here to the null object, and I just want position X. I'm going to just let go of the mouse and now it's connected. You'll see this comp layer, null 1, transform position 0, meaning that it's the X. I'm going to do the same thing for Y. Option click, now pick whip, and I want position Y, and now we'll do the exact same thing for rotation. And on this one we just need rotation. Okay, so now let's have a look at what we've got. We only have tracking data for the first few seconds, but it now looks pretty solid. The thing is that our horizon is not perfectly straight. Um, so we now have a feature that we can turn on, which is the horizon line, and we can still make our standard reorient sphere adjustments now based on this tracking data that's been fed in. So we want to make sure that the horizon point in the center is equal to the horizon point at the left and right edges. And uh, just by making that small adjustment, and maybe I'll just pan a tiny bit so that our vector is directly forward, and we can even change the roll if we have to, if it feels that uh, the horizon was not perfect. And we're just going to set this for the first frame, and because everything is tracked, it should follow that perfectly. You'll see now it looks like it's the helmet that's moving instead of the world that's moving and the helmet was stationary. Uh, and that's because the plugin is basically um, perfectly stabilizing everything. In this particular shot, you'll see that there's actually a slight temporal difference between the front camera and the back camera. Um, so it's, you know, it's not perfect at the back, but it is perfect at the front. Now this same concept can be applied to almost any shot that has some sort of clear um, trackable item that's on the horizon. So uh, let's have a look at a different type of shot. And this is just a handheld shot um, holding the camera on a selfie stick. And uh, we're just walking here. And so it's the same sort of thing, but now we don't have buildings to track. But what we do have is way off in the distance, which is zoom in here, we can see that we do have some trees and things that we can try to track way off over here. So uh, let's, let's give that a try. Let's see what happens. So once again, we're going to just make sure that our layer is selected, 
go to track in Mocha AE. It sends us over to Mocha. We can just click OK. I'm going to maximize the size here. We'll make sure to zoom in so we can get something good here to track. And now I'll create an X spline here on this particular shape. And as far as we're concerned, that's just a plane way off in, in the background. So let's just start tracking and see what happens. Okay, so we have our tracking data now. I can hit play here and it looks, uh, looks pretty good actually. So I'll export the data, position and rotation, copy to clipboard, go back to After Effects, make a new null object, click paste, remove the visibility on the null object, go over to our effects and select reorient sphere. And now when I open up reorient sphere in effects, we have to make sure we look at AE tracking inputs here. And let's open up the transform data on the uh, null object. And we see position and rotation here. So then we just option click down on position X on the little stopwatch. And then we use the pick whip to go to position X, option click, pick whip, position Y, and then option click, pick whip, rotation. And now let's put this on our norm normal scale here and have a look. And that's looking pretty solid, but now we should probably line this all up. So we'll turn on the horizon lines, and we see that we have some tilt here that we need to adjust. So let's get the tilt nice there, and there might be a, just a little bit of roll, but that looks actually pretty good. Okay, let's hit play and see how that looks. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now obviously you can still see the temporal disparity between the front lens and the back lens. Uh, hopefully with some of the new cameras that are coming out that uh, they'll take the picture at the exact same moment, so we, we shouldn't have any more of those sorts of issues. Um, but there we go, that's working out quite well. So let's just have a look at the before and after. And you can see that there's a gigantic difference between these shots. Stabilization definitely helps a whole lot. As always, if you have any questions, just contact us, support at dashwood360.com, and we'll try to answer them as quickly as we can.